So my name's Dave. G'day, everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about teamwork and collaboration with 500 students on and off campus. So I come from UNSW Sydney, a big Australian university. We have 65,000 students. Our engineering faculty has 17,000 students. That makes just our engineering school bigger than the whole of Stanford University. And we've got classes of 500 plus. In fact, this is my own class of engineering students. But that's 500 islands, right? 500 people looking down, taking down notes from a document projector, consuming PDFs, watching canned content. So here's a challenge. How do you get 500 students to work together as a single team, as a learning community, whether they're on campus or off campus? I'm going to talk to you today about modern digital education at UNSW. Well, the first thing I wanted to do was digitize and integrate the system. I replaced the document scanner with digital ink, just like this Surface Pen here, I'm using it as a remote. Then I started streaming my lectures live, live produced over YouTube. Students could comment even if they were off campus and get an answer from me straight to the camera. In 2017, I switched to Microsoft Teams. I told the students, hey, we're going to use this new tool. 60 seconds later, they started posting. They logged in, downloaded the app. No change management required. Engagement and rich communication followed. Engineering diagrams, mathematics, code. Students taking photos with their phone of engineering structures. Even taking photographs of handwritten mathematics on paper. I use channels for weekly content, like lecture notes. Here's a channel for week 11. Tabbed the week 11 notes, and there it is. But this is more than just aggregation of material into one place. It also creates a data schema, and you'll understand that in a minute. I could embed and share my OneNote using Class Notebook right into Teams. These notebook sections created by the channel, all of this inking, done live, just like we are now, but working together and collaboratively. And those 500 students, they all own the notebook. It's being synced in real time. Then Stream launched on Office 365, and I used it instead of YouTube to live stream my videos. But now I had all of the same power at the back end, but I also had analytics and content control. I could even embed lecture clips inside the OneNote notebook, inside Teams, all on a single login experience. Student documents could be created natively in Teams, whether they're on an iPad, any device at all. And we've got more than just the final document. We've got the entire version history and the telemetry. Our learning management system turned into an app for Teams, embedded natively within that environment. Forms became the fastest way to make a quiz. I could even run full power engineering software as a tab. The single integrated solution resulted in a 900% increase in the number of student posts per student per week and massive increases in engagement. But you know what? I actually created my own problem. We couldn't keep up with all of the questions. Sometimes we would miss them. And you know, when one student reaches out and asks a question and you miss it, that's a lost opportunity to connect with that single person. So I want to talk about leveraging AI for a second. What's possible with an integrated system? Well, meet QuestionBot. QuestionBot is a bot that we created in order to solve this problem. And it was built by partners who are right here today, Antaro Solutions. <laughs> so it's a simple value proposition, right? Students tag the question bot, it looks up which tutorial group they're in, looks up who their TA is, tags it. TA gets a notification on their phone, answers wherever they're at, and question bot closes the service ticket by being told what the correct answer was. So it's actually keeping track of question and answer pairs. It's helping everyone connect, and every Q&A pair is there inside the specific topic. And of course today, if it doesn't work on mobile, it doesn't work. So QuestionBot is actually creating a study resource for the students, filtered by topic. It's not a textbook. It's made out of their own collaboration, their own discussions automatically. 
In fact, in the first two weeks alone, QuestionBot created 200 high-quality, topic-filtered question-and-answer pairs. Now, imagine six times that. So I used Q&A Maker, a cognitive service on Azure, in order to train the AI of the bot. And within a couple of weeks, it started answering questions on its own. But not just that, QuestionBot was also able to direct the students back to the conversations where their peers had been talking about similar problems. That's reconnecting people and building learning communities. So there's another problem. A lot of students would upload photos for their questions. And there's no context within the question that they've asked to build a high quality question and answer pair. So I started putting QR codes on all of the learning material. And using a vision cognitive service, QuestionBot was able to see what question the students were working on and say, hey, I see you're working on question 4.1. Pull relevant information from its own knowledge base, deliver more useful assets to the students. And remember those lecture recordings that were on stream? Well, it's a SharePoint asset. And QuestionBot could find it there with no configuration. It's able to search the transcript, and if the answer to a student's question happens to be in the lecture, it can deliver a time-stamped video link to the exact second. So using Graph API and Bot Framework, we built and deployed this with just one developer in eight weeks. You know, the fire hose of conversation turned from a problem into a digital asset for us and the students. So lastly, I want to talk about closing the loop. We've leveraged this value that we have. We've leveraged all of these digital assets and we've integrated our solution. But how can we turn all of that data into new material? In fact, by integrating all of these systems, I have very highly structured data on SQL. And I can create a one-click Power BI dashboard for students to get their marks. So maybe a student might think they did poorly in this particular topic, but because of the data there, they can see that they were actually in the 75th quarter. Maybe it was just a tough question. And the dashboard reflows on mobile. So I used 2017 data to train an Azure machine learning model to correlate all of the information against student performance. And using a database of competency-ranked resources, that's every single topic against every difficulty level, and an algorithm on .NET, we automatically assembled 500 individual personalized, optimized study packs for every student based on the prediction of not only their exam result, but their exam result for every individual question two weeks before sitting in. And uploaded to SharePoint with personal access, one click in Teams. Pretty cool, right? So we've built a learning community, right? 500 students, they're working together. And doing that, we managed to achieve a, comp a satisfaction ratio of 99%. And that's because we're personalizing the experience for every student. We're actually able to identify at-risk students by week four of the course when they could still drop it, when it still matters. I reach out personally to every one of those at-risk students and say, hey, how can I help? And what about that challenge, 500 students working together as a team? Well, I asked them, do you feel part of a learning community? 100.0 said yes. But you know the most valuable thing in that room? It's the people. Every student has got 499 other brilliant young people there to collaborate with, to work together, to create new material, their own course, creating rather than consuming. But you know what's really interesting is this thing, artificial intelligence, that we think of as being inhuman. It's actually allowing us to achieve an incredibly humanistic goal, creating people together, personalizing their experience, and reaching out to those people in need.